Hello and welcome to Tip of the Week. This week we're going to discuss bringing CAD files into Revit that have way, way out origin points. Now, some files will take, Revit will take them in, but once they go outside about 20 miles, then Revit throws fits. The project we're working on now has that problem. So how can we get the information in if the coordinates are all wacky? So what we're going to do is we're going to clean a few files up and bring them in that way. Now what I did originally was I've taken and I've, I've noted the corner site. Now you can do this on projects that have, let's say, smaller coordinates. You'll go up top, you'll go up top and hit manage, and you'll tell it to specify coordinates at a point. You pick the point, and then you tell Revit what it is. So when a CAD file comes in, if you do origin origin, it knows where its zero is, which is way down here, uh, way down in you know lower area, and they lay around on top of each other. Now, being that we're in the, the three million feet, Revit's coughing up a hairball, so we can't use this tool. So what do we do? Uh, there are other options. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch on over to AutoCAD, and we're going to do what I call a reverse clean. Now, let me go ahead and uh, undo a few things that I've done here. All right. Um, now, if I zoom out on this model, you'll notice there's stuff floating around out here. And uh, it may be some things I'm familiar with, maybe not. But all I want is this here. That's really what's important to me. Now, I'm going to thaw everything. Now, go on down here and make sure everything's thawed. Or you can just use the command line. I'm a big command line guy. I'll type hyphen LA. That's going to fire up the layer dialog interface. Now, I'm a big typer, so I'm going to say thaw, TH, enter. And then I hit an asterisk, and I hit enter. And then enter again. What that did, it thawed everything in the project. Um, I do that so I can get rid of stuff that's out there. Now, you'll see lots of things pop up. You're like, hey, look at all that stuff that's showing up in the model now. So these are things that were thawed. I mean, just hidden. You're thinking, well, <laughs> I could use that stuff. So we've got some uh, line work in the model that we want to use, but there's lots of other stuff. And if I do a zoom extents, Z, enter, E, enter, what's going to happen is it's running right now because it's going to zoom out so far we're not going to be able to see anything. There you go. But you're like, whoa. You're like, I only want that stuff on the screen. Now I'm going to hit undo, and we're back. Now you'll notice I type commands, and that's just uh, I'm old school. And uh, it also helps out because any menu that's running, I can always type the command. So uh, now, here we are. We're going to use what I call a reverse erase. Now, it's kind of a sweet little tool. It's pretty easy. What we're going to do is we're going to start the erase command. E-R-A-S-E, erase, enter. Now, it says select objects. I'm going to type in all, enter. Now, what all is going to do is go get everything that is on the screen plus anything that's turned off. So all is very powerful. You need to be careful with it. So when you got everything in the project. Now here's where the interesting thing happens, right? So it's picked up all. Now what I'm going to do is say R, enter. Now see it moves, it now is in a remove mode. I'm now going to do a crossing over the model here. Okay? And you'll notice that these objects were removed from the selection set. Now if you're worried about it, you can do it again, right? These objects were removed, these are still in the selection set. Now when I hit enter, what it does, it actually erases everything outside of that window. Now, here comes the big test, right? Does it work? Z, enter, E, enter. Now, you'll see it blast out to nowhere land. Sometimes there'll be an XREP or some lost element. And uh, if you go and look around here, hopefully you'll see it. If not, I'm going to select. You see there's something out there still. Now, I'm going to do another reverse erase. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I can see where my model is. And again, erase, enter, all, enter. Okay. Now, at this point, erase, and then I hit remove, enter, and I do a crossing or a window. Now, we may not get that object, right? But chances are because maybe we've done a crossing instead of a remove instead of a well, crossing instead of a remove, right? So you may have a little piece out here because it may have actually had something over here also. So what we're going to do now is we're going to zoom back in and say, hey, there's even some more stuff. What was all about that? Instead of doing a crossing, we're going to do a window. Now, let's take take a look at it, erase. Okay. So when I did a crossing, it may have had a part over there and over there, like a block or something, and it may not erase it. Erase. Select objects. I'm going to use a window now. Oh, wrong one. Let's try that. E, erase. Enter. All. Enter. And then I say remove. Use a window this time. Okay. Now I hit enter. Everything else goes away. Z, enter. E, enter. Okay. Now remember, 
windows only select things that are not 100% in the window. All right. Now, notice what's missing. See all the piping? That piping was tied back way back over here. And it may have been an extra or something. Let's go to manage. Okay. Well, again, let's type in XREF. And there may have been an XREF in there that was actually uh, causing that problem. All right. So that may have been what it was. And that's why we were uh, getting that zoom out forever stuff. So now we have a clean one. Check it. Z, enter, E, enter. Okay. There it is. Now, the insertion point is still way, way out there. If you look at the coordinates down here, see, that's where the, the zero is. It's way out there. Now I'm going to save this file, drop it down, save as, okay, and I'm going to call it save as clean, site plan clean. That way I know I've cleaned it up and I'll leave the original as is. Now back to Revit. Go back to Revit. Here we are. Now we're going to try the uh, origin point again, but it is outside of that area, so it's probably not going to work. Insert, link CAD, and I'll pick the clean one this time, and I'm going to say origin, origin. Um, and I hit open. Now we let it run for a minute, and if it was not so far out there, uh, it would have worked out. But notice what it did. It says imported objects located a large distance from the model uh, might display properly, blah, blah, blah. So it says the center center option will be used. So what it did, it actually brought it in center, but notice real simple center because it is not a big model. Now I can come in here and I can move it to where I need it to be. So that's my original line. This is my CAD model. So move from endpoint to endpoint. All right. And uh, it says it's pinned. That's why I can't move it. So let me go ahead and unpin that puppy. We'll hit move from point to point. So uh, that's a way to deal with large, crazy sites like this uh, to get those things to work. Now, if we needed to bring that pipe in, I think there was an XREF, so we could have um, bring it in separately, but we do the same thing with it. So I hope that little tip helped, but that is how you can bring your sites in into Revit if they're large or have unwieldy origin points. Hope you enjoyed the tip. Check us out on the web at thebimguys.com or therevitguys.com. Thank you.